far as I know, it was the first time that cameras were allowed in his home in McLean, Virginia. It was a great experience for me, and I hope for the viewers. There was a side as the senator that I don't think you see every day. As you can all see, he was charismatic, charming, as he's well known to be. And as far as I was concerned, it was a very, very interesting conversation. There I had an opportunity to spend uh, over an hour with a man that is certainly one of the world's most successful politician. And yet, I saw something else, and I hope the viewers too, I saw a little boy in him, this charming side that all the Kennedys have, that terrific Kennedy charm. It was a great lesson for me. to have you for dinner at any uh, time and uh, so you're awfully uh, nice to come down in a warm summer's night in Washington to, to come back and uh, visit a good friend. I always uh, sort of think of you a little bit of as an adversary though, across the tennis court oh. in a competitive role. Well, you know, <laughs> now that you bring that up, is this, I must uh, tell you that the, one of the greatest feelings I had, we were playing the finals at Forest Hills. And you were playing... Uh, I have the... Uh, do you want to see the trophy? It was around here trophy. somewhere. <laughs> okay. I, I must tell you that uh, you were playing with Ramirez, and I was playing with John Lloyd, the Englishman. And uh, I remember that we were about three all in, uh, in the, the set. And I looked around... You know, I, anyone would have forgotten the score by this no, time. No, no. <laughs> not me. Because I, 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 I looked at all those wonderful Kennedy kids there. Oh, that threw looking, you off. A true mentor. <laughs> I, I double faulted. You won the game, and the, the rest is history. You beat me fair and square, and I had won the year before. Ah. And I must tell you that this tournament is uh, fantastic. It's wonderful there. for you to play at that uh, tournament. It was a charity uh, tennis tournament uh, for the uh, Robert Kennedy uh, Memorial. Uh, and that uh, RFK Memorial is enormously important, uh, not only the members of the family, but particularly for the uh, Robert Kennedy uh, children. And it carries on many of the uh, uh, the goals and the aims and the dreams of uh, Robert Kennedy. We had a it was a, a fun time, but uh, we had some uh, 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 some good times uh, too. And you you were always uh, been such a, a friend to all of the uh, sisters and brothers as well that uh, you were so good to participate. And your mother that I had the pleasure to know quite well, and your father created such a a fantastic genetic. Uh, combination with all these successful Kennedys, all beautiful, and, and, and I must say, you know that, uh, I'm saying this with complete and total honesty, I, I am trying to figure out in my mind the marvelous contribution that such a mother and a father did, and to succeed in having uh, uh, such successful uh, children, and you are now perpetrating that with your own. Now, what was it to be the son of Joe Kennedy and the son of such a wonderful woman? Each of the parents had obvious uh, different qualities. My mother, source of love and faith and uh, a sense of, of uh, expectation and hope. I think she was always positive in terms of her own feelings and her life. And my father was uh, uh, one who uh, had a sense of a really sort of expectation and uh, interested in driving, I suppose, competitive but terrific fun. And they matched very, very well, loved each other very uh, deeply. And uh, I think uh, all of us grew up in a family that was very close. And I think one of the um, nicest uh, real legacies that have been passed on is that my sisters and, and Ethel and, and Jackie uh, have really imparted that same kind of uh, sense to this uh, next generation. I think, for the most part, uh, the best friends of all of the uh, grandchildren of each other and themselves. And I think that that's been one of the things which has been uh, one of the great gifts which we've been uh, had. I wanted to ask you about the marvelous reminiscence of the Camelot, of the, the White House days, because to me it would remain a, a tremendous thing for the rest of my life. I mean, I loved your brothers, and uh, I was a real samurai to them. They were uh, good sure. enough to uh, allow me to be part of their, this 
exalting moment in the history of America where President Kennedy brought to the White House not only the beautiful people, but also the intellectual, the artist, all the people of significance in the world. So that Versailles was really nothing. I think it was the first time in history, really, that uh, such a beautiful couple uh, created such a message to the world. And I was, in a small part, involved in that program. And uh, uh, what does it do to you at this stage of your life with that tremendous hereditary memory? Well, of course, uh, what I uh, remember most is that uh, the fact that uh, uh, my brothers were my brothers, a close family, and uh, in spite of, or even with all of uh, the success, uh, we had a close personal a relationship that really never altered or changed. Uh, something really does, I suppose, alter or change when a brother is elected uh, president, certainly, but uh, still he was very much uh, the same person before he was elected as afterward. And uh, he was very close to both um, Bob and, my, uh, and myself and my sisters uh, as well. Uh, so uh, I think the probably now, it's pro every day that goes by, uh, obviously you think about them, miss them, love them very deeply, inspired by them. And I think one of the, uh, the essential parts of their appeal is that they, uh, they challenge us to, to, uh, to do better. They believe that individuals could do better. They believe the country could do better. And the uh, central challenge of uh, their uh, time was to, uh, uh, to challenge individuals and to challenge the country. And that's, uh, that was expressed in different, uh, different types of ways. But I think if you look back over the course of the history of this country, or, uh, that we always do well when we are challenged. And when people say everything, you can just take it easy, we can make things easier for you. It brings a kind of internal kind of questioning about yourself, your life, family's life, and the rest. And I think that they, uh, they understood that. In the face of our loss, this is but natural. But as the first bitter pangs of our incredulous grief begins to pass, we must thank God that we were privileged, however briefly, to have had this great man for our president, for he has now taken his place among the great figures of the world. Well, uh, I must say that uh, secretly, and I've never asked you this question, but secretly in my heart, I always thought, how can a man bear such pain with such dignity? What is the secret? What is the wonderful uh, power that you were able to harness to overcome such a tremendous loss? And how do you live with it now? Because, I mean, it, it must be still pain, constant pain, because I've had a, a terrible fear, things in my life, but I can't compare it with what has happened to you. How do you handle that uh, memory of pain? Well, I think um, there's no uh, easy answers, and uh, no one thinks that they do probably handle it as well as they should everyone is sort of human and all of us feel the anguish and the sadness and uh, the uh, the sense of uh, loss I do other members of the family do I think we were very uh, blessed with uh, uh, being a, having a, a very strong number of people um, basically the family that uh, were supporting uh, each other and that uh, and a very very uh, deep sense of faith and I think that that was uh, something that they carried uh, the family through very difficult times. And it's uh, difficult, obviously, to quantify. Uh, but we were been very fortunate to have been a larger family, large family, and uh, with uh, people that were very close and parents that were very, uh, very close and a uh, sense of faith and understanding of, uh, about, uh, to some extent, about the things that we believed in. I suppose that that's the basic and fundamental source of internal strength. But, but now that you understand it, Bera, the, the great, uh, I mean, the most important man of heart in the, our political yeah. scene, you were a junior senator, now you're king of the hill, 20 years <laughs> almost have passed. Another Kennedy has thrown his hat into the national political arena. Edward M. or Ted officially announces his campaign for the Massachusetts Senate seat once held by his brother, the president. The youngest of the three brothers, 
he will face Edward J. McCormick, Jr., nephew of the Speaker of the House, in the Democratic primary. In 25 years that have gone probably very fast for you, where you have achieved so much, could you give me a sense of what you felt uh, from junior senator to who you are today? Well, there's no uh, sort of moment when the time changes. I mean, it's sort of an evolutionary uh, process. And uh, I think uh, even uh, today, after 25 years, you still continue to be sort of challenged. I mean, uh, you win some victories, but uh, you have, uh, in the United States Senate, there's many defeats. And I, I think that uh, if uh, you don't have some uh, defeats, you're probably not doing the job that you were elected to. Uh, we're involved in a lot of issues. It's basically about you know, questions and issues involving the terms of the average American family, the schools, housing, food, uh, shelter, uh, the elderly people in our society, yeah, but the young and old alike. So it's a, sort of the domestic kind of agenda, but that's a controversial and question. But uh, you have victories and... Uh, and yeah, but you, you've had certainly more victories than defeats. I think the question yourself. about the victories is that uh, finally the people understand, uh, the American people understand, or people in my state, which I care about deeply, Massachusetts, that you sort of stand for certain uh, principles and values, and, and um, that, uh, uh, that you, there's a sense of constancy. And that, that part of somebody who's involved in public life um, is a source of satisfaction. I, uh, I think that they kind of understand that you may win some, that you may lose some. They may agree with you sometimes, and they differ with you sometimes, but I think the American um, uh, people are not just looking for people that are always going to be successful or always going to win. I think that they want a sense of con consistency and constancy uh, uh, based upon real uh, belief and but, real... Uh, but, you know, you stand for yeah. something very special, and uh, I, sometimes the person doesn't realize... You better eat your uh, lunch. It's dinner. Yeah, it's so interesting. Gonna what gonna you <laughs> I, I forgot to... This charming sight that all the Kennedys have, that terrific Kennedy charm. It was a great lesson to me. Delighted to have you for dinner at any uh, time, and uh, so you're awfully uh, nice to come down in a warm summer's night in Washington to, to come back and uh, visit a good friend. I always uh, sort of think of you a little bit of as an advocate. As far as I know, it was the first time that cameras were allowed in his home in McLean, Virginia. It was a great experience for me, and I hope for the viewers. There was a side of the senator that I don't think you see every day. As you can all see, he was charismatic, charming, as he's well known to be. And all the members of our family... As far as I was concerned, it was a very, very interesting conversation. There I had an opportunity to spend uh, over an hour with a man that is certainly one of the world's most successful politicians. And yet, I saw something else, and I hope the viewers too, I saw a little boy in him.